What's going on guys? Welcome to another uh, gameplay video here today. I'm very, very excited. Today we are taking a second look at Blue White Flyers. This is submitted by Turn 1 Soul Ring, as was the first deck uh, that we played actually a number of weeks back, uh, pre-Core Set 2021. Now we've got a couple of cards there uh, that I think are really going to push this deck over the top. I have playtested this deck just a little bit, uh, and it seems great. It, it seems very, very effective, very, very efficient. Uh, I wonder about some consistency issues, but we'll talk about that as we go through. And overall, I, I actually really think this is a strong contender for standard right now. So I'm excited to jump into this one to kind of go over the deck, though. Uh, we do have in the one drop slot for Fairy Miscreant. This is just a great 1-1 one -one flyer that also uh, conditionally will be able to draw us a card. So if we get more than one of these, obviously, it's going to help us draw into more and more threats. Uh, card draw is very important for the blue-white flyers deck. That's why we also have things like Staggering Insight uh, to really help us get through and hopefully uh, not only gain a little bit of life with Staggering Insight, but also continuously draw some cards. We we are the evasive deck, uh, and so generally speaking, it's pretty easy to stick this on pretty much anything uh, and get tons and tons of value out of it. So very, very good. Spectral Sailor also is a three of here uh, and does give us some card draw. This is another way uh, that at least later in the game we can start drawing some cards. So very, very happy uh, with that. Uh, in the two drop slot here, we do have the Staggering Insight. As far as creatures go... Uh, Skycat Sovereign was one that we found in Akoria that was really, really good. It's a, a two mana 1-1 one, one flyer, uh, but it gets plus one, plus one for each other creature with flying you control. Uh, so naturally, it's just going to start really, really boosting itself up. But not only that, it can spit out its own tokens for four mana, uh, which it's pretty good. It's, it's a great mana sink in place of the Spectral Sailor. Uh, either one of these uh, on four is actually very, very potent. Uh, now... One of the big new cards from uh, Corset 2021 is Watcher of the Spheres. It is a 2-2 two, two for 2. Uh, it has flying, obviously, but creature spells you control with or you cast with flying cost one less to cast, uh, which means essentially you just cheapen up your entire deck, which is great. Uh, but not only that, whenever another creature with flying enters the battlefield under your control, it also gets plus one, plus one. Uh, now, that is only until the end of the turn, but the idea here is this is a great aggressive target. It can really, really jump in there. Uh, and not only that, we've got a few things with Flash. If you look, of course, we've got Spectral Sailor, but also Brazen Borrower here uh, as Flash opportunities to kind of buff this up on the opponent's turn if need be. Uh, so very, very strong there. Again, we've already talked about Staggering Insight, but another new card from Corset 2021 is Lofty Denial. It is one and a blue for an instant counter target spell unless this controller pays one. Now that doesn't seem all that great, and I understand, but uh, if you control a creature with flying, counter that spell unless its controller pays four instead. So this is a two mana, uh, more efficient mana leak, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, which is very, very good. This is a super, super good counter for this deck. It hits anything. Uh, it's great because especially with a lot of the aggro decks going around right now, uh, they don't necessarily run a lot of lands. Uh, in playtesting this, I was up against a mono white, kind of white weenie style deck uh, that essentially just lost because they only had two lands out and we just got to counter pretty much everything. So uh, very, very strong and very, very good in this list. Uh, Rally of Wings, uh, also kind of a card that we've had in this deck for a while, but is really very much an all star for two mana. You get to untap all the creatures you control. And then all of the ones with flying, which is, of course, all of ours, get plus two, plus two until the end of the turn. Now, this can be used offensively to kind of win the game very, very quickly or defensively since it is instant speed. You can kind of fake attack in, essentially, get some damage in and then untap them on the opponent's turn and really just sweep the board uh, by blocking if you need to. So very, very strong in this list. Um, in the three drop slot here. We do have Brazen Borrower. I already kind of mentioned that. This gives us a little bit of a tempo play, which is great, uh, but it also gives us a nice 3-1 flyer in the air. Uh, it can only block creatures with flying, so there's a bit of a downside there depending on the deck we're against, but overall this is just a nice aggressive 3-drop. Uh, Empyreon Eagle is the big lord of the deck. It is a 2-3 for 3 with flying. Other creatures you control with flying get plus 1, plus 1. This is one that we really, really want to hit on turn three if we can, because, again, we're buffing up the entire uh, uh, the entirety of the deck with this card. Uh, Jubilant Skybonder is another Akoria card, so it's a 2-2 two, two for three. 
Uh, only as a two of in this one, but I do think that makes sense. Uh, creatures you control with flying have spells your opponent's cast that target this creature cost two more to cast. So this is very much a protection card. It's not necessarily going to be the biggest deal against a lot of decks, especially any kind of goldfishy deck. Uh, but obviously against the right deck, it can really stave off a lot of, you know, removal spells, anything that's, uh, you know, murderous fighters, things like that. All of a sudden they cost five to actually kill one thing. Uh, and that's pretty good. That not only keeps them off of it in the early game, uh, but it also takes their entire turn uh, when you get to turns five and six. So very, very important. Uh, and then, of course, Safara, uh, Safara, excuse me, uh, Sky's Blade is our top end. It's a 7-7-4-7 seven, seven, seven with flying and lifelink. Uh, you can pay one white and tap four untapped creatures you control with flying rather than paying its mana costs. Uh, generally, that's not too difficult for us to do, uh, but other creatures you control with flying have indestructible, uh, so very, very efficient. Uh, as far as lands go, we are running 22 because, again, this is a fairly low curve deck. Safara, Safara excuse me, I keep saying Safara. Uh, Sky's Blade is not something we're looking to necessarily cast for the actual 7. We're definitely looking to go for the alternate cost there. Uh, we do have 10 islands, 5 planes, 2 Castle Ardenvale, just so we have a little bit of a creature uh, insurance policy. <clears throat> uh, Castle Vantress, Delpa Scry, and then, of course, 4 Hollowed Fountains. So, that's the list. Uh, I really, really like the look of this one. Uh, Turn 1 Soul Ring, really do appreciate you uh, resubmitting. Uh, it does mean a lot, and uh, I, I have high hopes for this one. I know the first one, we kind of joked around about it. Turn 1 Soul Ring and I were joking that, you know, the first one didn't quite go as planned. Uh, and so it was a little bit rough. Um, but I think this one definitely has a higher, uh, higher chance of really, really getting there. Now, this is a bit of an odd hand. I do want to point that out. Um, the Lofty Denials are good, but only with creatures with flying, as well as Staggering Insight. We do have all of the lands we essentially could ever need, um, and we are running a low land count, so this is kind of an interesting one. I hesitate to keep. Um, the Lofty Denials might come in handy, uh, but I think, uh, given that we are, um, on the draw here, mm, you know what, let's try it. I think this is a, potentially a mistake, but we're going to try it. Also, I have some very hot apple cider. I'm loving it. I love apple cider. It's one of my favorite things. Okay, well, that's helpful. Um, that gives us a play at the very least, so that's very, very good uh, and exactly what we were looking for. I uh, just want to mention to you guys also, I am super excited uh, because... Uh, one second. Uh, tonight, for the first time in quite... Ooh, that's even better. Uh, for the first time in quite a while, uh, we get to record for the JDC. Uh, if you don't know what the JDC is, it's something we've kind of talked about and spoiled a little bit. Um, it's actually something we did, Will and I did at one point. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't. we weren't able to keep it up, I will say, uh, just due to scheduling issues, if nothing else. But uh, the idea was that we wanted to just sit down and do something where we got to, you know, both sit down, play Magic together, and just have some silly fun with it. Um, and so the thought process was if we uh, managed to essentially um, get some nice deck lists going that were kind of silly and not necessarily super competitive, um, we could do something really, really fun with it and make it kind of its own little entity, so to speak. And if you've ever seen something like What the Deck that Day 9 does, it's a very similar thing. It just much smaller scale. We're not Day 9. Um, we would love to be, but certainly not uh, anywhere close to that. Um, and so we we kind of modeled it a little bit after that, uh, and I think for good reason. I mean, he, he does a great job with his content. So uh, the idea was to kind of do something similar to the what, the what the Deck series, and I think we found a way to do that. I, I feel very strongly that, you know, this is going to be something that's really, really fun. Hopefully it's something we can push out there a little bit more. Um, we certainly have a long way to go, and this is going to be a first iteration of it, so obviously we're aware of that, but uh, I do really, really enjoy uh, the idea behind this, and I do think it's going to be quite fun uh, to really to really get going, so I'm excited. Um, let's see. So we can do this. We can actually just kill Nissa now if we would like, um, but I don't actually think we need to. <laughs> I understand it's not necessarily super beneficial for us to attack Nissa, but um, I do think it's slightly necessary. 
uh, and we do get to leave up the lofty denial here. Granted, it is versus, you know, Anissa, so <laughs> there is that. Um, they can pay for this if they tap both. Um, we're just going to go ahead and do this just to make them spend mana if they'd like. Mm. Delicious. Uh, we will be able to take Nissa out next turn, which is quite nice, though. Uh, and Rally the Wings is going to be quite helpful in this scenario. That's fine. Mm. Delicious. I hope you guys are having a great start to the week. I know if you're in the U.S., uh, 4th of July is coming up. Hopefully you guys will be staying safe. Um, I'm, I'm excited to get a day off uh, on Friday uh, and just enjoy my day. Um, hopefully still be able to record a little bit, but not necessarily going to be the focus. I think the plan is just to relax and enjoy the day a little bit, uh, which I think is highly, highly important. So uh, let's drop this. Um, we're going to both attack here. <clears throat> now they can block both of these, in fact, uh, if they would like to. If they only block one, we may rally just to get through this. Uh, in fact, yeah, let's do that. Uh, that also gains us a bit of life, which is, you know, quite nice. Um, okay. Uh, so now, if they do try and play another Nissa, we can denial that. Uh, we'll see. We will see. I do think the Nissa is something we kind of have to fight through. Uh, it's pretty important. Um, this is going to work out very substantially in our favor if they attack with both of these. Uh, yeah. Let's do this. I know we're going to lose a creature here, um, but... Let's go ahead and do this. We do lose the Skycat Sovereign here. Okay. Well, they're just going to give up. All right, cool. Game one. Got it. Uh, I think the point was to really devalue what they were doing. Um, we have the staggering insight on that, uh, the, uh, the new bird, I can't think of the name. Uh, and so I think it was important just to keep getting that through. Uh, so felt great. Uh, great turn or great game one, turn one soul ring. We may have done it. I think, uh, you put a lot of effort into this deck and it shows, I think this one's very, very good. Granted that's game one. So we'll, we'll see after this, but, uh, I do really, really enjoy this deck so far. Ooh. However... Uh, we cannot keep this. Uh, a one lander. If this was a blue land, I'd be a little... That's eh, still not worth it, I guess. Um, okay, but this is actually quite a decent hand. So let's keep the six here. Let's drop that. Uh, and let's just go ahead and play a fairy miscreant. Let's just be easy. Um, and I think we'll lean on the staggering insight considering uh, we, we did have to um, mulligan. Uh, and so I'd rather go ahead and get this in there, start the, the life game, but also the card draw uh, to start digging through our deck. That's really game plan A, uh, if we can help it, is to just continuously push out uh, more and more of these uh, uh, staggering insights. That's one of the plans. Uh, the other plan is just to go wide, obviously, but... Huh. Okay. Well, that sucks, but that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and play this out. And we'll just go ahead and play this out as well. Probably should have done that. Uh, well, no. I I'm glad I did it that way, I think. Hmm. Now, this card I have not seen yet. Um, Maze Mind Tome. Put a page counter on it. Put a page counter. Exile it if you do gain four life. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, okay. We'll just attack in here. Part of me is tempted to bounce that, but the other part of me just thinks drawing a card might be best. Um, and I think we'll lean on the drawing a card. We can always bounce stuff on their turn if, if need be. Um, and I'd rather them invest some more time uh, if we can help it. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and draw a card here. Um, we do need to keep that card draw rolling, of course, so that's, that's really, really important to us here. Um, 
let's do this. Uh, we are going to start kind of playing some things out here. Um, but we, I think, are going to need to be slightly careful. We can't really overcommit too much. Uh, so I may hold back on this. Uh, it's questionable. It's very questionable. Um, but I think we'll do that. We can leave up the borrower uh, to bounce something here. Uh, more in, in particular this, just to set them back. Uh, and we'll end the turn. I did play this pre-combat for a very specific reason, obviously. Uh, it powers this up. So that was the idea there, just a heads up. There was a reason behind uh, doing that. Normally I wouldn't. Uh, let's go ahead and bounce this now. Um, just to kind of make him do something here. Um, let's go ahead and play the Brazen Borrower. Again, just to, uh, to get this in there for a little bit more. Ooh, okay, we actually missed lethal there. Um, I didn't really think we should overcommit too much. I was kind of expecting them to do something about that, but they didn't, uh, which was a little surprising. But either way, unless they sweep... Okay, yeah, we got it. Mm. Fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic. If we get one more win, we rank up. I've never been to Platinum 1, let alone anything past that, so... Uh, just in time for things to reset. Heck yeah. Look at that. That's the It Resolves way right there, man. <laughs> uh, turn one Soul Ring, man. This deck is working. I appreciate it. Great submission. Really, really fun to, uh, to try this one out. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is interesting. We're gonna try this one. This one's a little bit sketchy. Um, it's not bad, necessarily. Um, because actually on two, we get to leave up quite a bit. Uh, and start countering a good bit of what they do, but uh, looks like they're in a kind of a similar deck that we are, actually. Um, you know what? I'm going to attack in. Let's see what they do. Uh, chances are they don't do anything. Yeah. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. Now we just start uh, start countering everything. Looks like is it. Makes sense. I'll just go ahead and counter that. I'm not tremendously worried about it necessarily, but, um, and really maybe what we should be doing is countering the, uh, instance, not necessarily the creatures. Uh, they've probably got stronger creatures out there. This might actually be very helpful, so I'm going to push this out there. Uh, the reason I say that, if they've got burn spells, uh, making them cost two more to actually burn out some of our creatures is great. Uh, not only that, but we're getting closer to Sephara, uh, which is obviously quite important as well, so, um... Like, in this position now, they cannot shock uh, any of our creatures. So I just don't have to worry about that now. Um, just because of, you know, this little ability here. That feels pretty good. Uh, we also, with the Brazen Borrower, uh, at some point we may find the need to bounce this, uh, which is perfectly fine with me. Um, I'm betting they have a shock, and they didn't really... Didn't really understand what they couldn't do there, but I may be wrong. Um, let's let's just attack him with the 2-2. Two -two. Let's be a bit safe here. Right now, our threats are better, uh, and so I want to keep that up. Um, draw a card. Okay. Frantic Inventory. Very cool. Uh, cool to see that card. I don't know really how good it is. Um, obviously, it, it jumps up, um, but... Yep, so here we just get to counter and blank their turn, uh, which feels good. Let's just blank it even more. Um, wow, Imperion Eagle, very, very good here. Um, this just gets this guy out of shock range, which is quite good. And, I mean, obviously if they have that, that's fine, but uh, it just makes it a little trickier. Very good. Very, very good. Ooh, wish we would have had that counter. Um, okay. Well, we pass. Uh, there's not much we can do. We're just going to either counter something or flash out Brazen Borrower. Depending on what they do, I think the only thing we actually counter is something that kills one of our things. If nothing kills any of our stuff, we flash out Brazen Borrower, and then we uh, get Safara down next turn. That's very good. Um, but, yeah, that's fine. No blocks. We're going to take five. That's totally fine. 
Uh, so we're going to flash out Brazen Bar over here. Go ahead and get that down. Now we've got Safara coming down next turn, uh, which gives everything we've got indestructible. Which is pretty good, as it turns out. Uh, we do have to tap all of our stuff to do it, uh, which is not great. <clears throat> but it is an 8-8 with lifelink, uh, and we still have a counter up. So hopefully that's the right play. We'll see. Um, but I do feel pretty good about this, uh, this deck in general. Um, really, really liking it. We'll counter that. If they've got another one, they've got another one. We're going to make them play it, though. Doesn't look like they do. It's great for us. Just means they can't really attack in. <laughs> uh, hopefully they don't have a follow-up way to deal with this, but it costs so much for them to target it thanks to the Jubilant Skybonder. And this is a prime example of why this card is so good, but it is conditionally so good. Like, it's not going to be great every single time. Uh, however, it does give us the out of saying, you know, against this, this kind of deck where their goal is just to you know, go ham with a bunch of instants and sorceries, it does give us an option uh, to kind of protect ourselves, which is fantastic. So very, very happy with that. Um, here they are tapped out. They don't have a great attack. Um, part of me, okay, they decided to. Um, naturally, we're going to kill this. We gain our 8 back up to 10, and now they're left with two five fives. I don't think that was a great attack, uh, I'll be honest. Um... All right, what do we want to do? We're gonna attack with, we can just attack with everything and win. I'm over here overthinking this, we can just win. All right, I'm over here, I literally was not looking at life total. I was like, how do we sur make sure we survive the next turn? We don't have to, we're, we're fine. <laughs> hey, look at that. For the first time ever, we hit diamond. That has never happened. That is very, very exciting. And turn one soul ring, your deck is what got us there. So thank you very, very much. I really do appreciate... Oh, and let's open up a little pack. I really do appreciate the submissions, guys. Um, I know we've had a lot, and I know turn one soul ring in particular has submitted quite a number of them. Uh, I have been looking at the other deck lists as well, and we've got a few ideas there. Um, some of them are just not quite, uh, we'll say... I don't want to say competitive, because that's not really fair, but... Uh, some of them just aren't quite up to par with, um, with I think, the best of one ladder. Uh, and I, I say that because we do playtest the decks uh, now that we've had enough issues where we were playing decks on video that were not necessarily all that great. Uh, and so we ran into the issue of, well, this is just losing, 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 losing. It's not very exciting to watch. And so uh, for, for me, I think the best course of action was to vet the decks a little bit. Uh, and so I do, I, I test the decks a little bit. I, at least I try to, unless I know they're going to be good. Um, I try to vet the decks a little bit before we actually play on video. That way we know. And unfortunately some of them, uh, despite really appreciating the submission, just aren't quite up to par. So, uh, I do apologize if you don't see your deck, it's probably just that reason. It's not necessarily a bad deck. We just need to swap a few cards out. So, uh, we do plan to kind of relook through these and maybe see if we can swap a few cards out and make sure we credit you. Uh, with actually the original idea of the deck, because um, that that's important. You guys are the ones doing a lot of the work, so it's on you guys. So thank you very much, though, for the submission, Turn 1 Soul Ring. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to video two with this one. I think it's going to be great. Uh, and man, three for three on this one so far. Not only that, we got up to diamonds. So really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very, very soon with part two of this blue-white flyers list. Very stoked about this one.